and this in this model we are going to see the reproduction of the distributed system. So according to the Bookish language, distributed systems are the connected uh, network of computers that are connected together and they do not share the common input and they communicate each other by message passing. So there are many key terms in this uh, definition. So let us understand it one by one. So the first key term is network of computers. Second is they do not share the common memory. And the third one is they communicate by message passing. So let's see how the distributed system came into existence. So we know the com uh, computer architecture is divided into two parts. First is the tightly coupled and second is the loosely coupled. The tightly coupled systems are those that share the common memory. And the loosely coupled systems are those that do not share the common memory. And a part of the loosely coupled system is a distributed system. So this is a very interesting topic and let's see the advantages of the distributed system. The first and very useful advantage of the distributed system is the low cost and the shared resources. Uh, for example, in our organization, there is a printer and many employees use the single printer. Uh, we do not have to use a separate printer for each other. Second is the fault uh, Many computers are connected in a network and if a single computer fails, then another computer can take its job and perform the task. And the third one is the shared resources. Uh, now let's understand distributed system by an example, simple example. Uh, understand our organization is there and there are many employees working with there over there. And each employee is having a uh, separate system. If an employee has to print something, uh, we do not need a separate printer for each of the employees. Rather, we use a printer and connect all the systems to that printer. And whenever an employee gives a command over there, a queue is maintained in the printer uh, pool and one by one it is served for the employees uh, for the jobs. So as you can see, the concept seems to be easy, but there are many uh, issues in that. So now, now the next, next topic is the issues in the distributed system. So the very first issue in the distributed system is that we need to scale it. Scale it. We need to scale the system. First we are dealing with a single system. Now we have to deal with a network of computers. Network of systems. So obviously we need to scale. Second is the access of the shared memory. Uh, we do not share memory. Each system is having a, its own memory. It performs its task. And now we have to synchronize all the tasks performed by every system into a serial. So uh, this serialability is main issue. And the third is the absence of the global clock. The clocks need to be synchronized. Another issues are a mutual exclusion. Since the resources are the resources are shared, each system uses that resources. So we need that each process will be mutually exclusive. They do not interfere with each other at all. And since uh, this process is taking place synchronizedly, uh, sometimes the situation of deadlock also occurs. So we need to detect the deadlock and avoid. So these are the issues in the distributed system. So guys, this was all about the introduction to the distributed system. In the next lecture, we are talking about the uh, logical clocks, physical clocks, global clocks, lambda scope, vector clock, etc. So uh, if you want us to shoot any videos for you, just type in the comment box. And you can also mail us at bgravitatorate.gmail.com. And if you like our content, do like and subscribe and then the next video.